no other talent, so to speak, is in here yet. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, uh, try interrupt because I think I'm losing both sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, you're okay. Okay, can't hear you real well. I think you need to be, uh, yeah, that's much better. Much better. Benny? What? No idea what's going on. I don't either. Okay, good. We begin this thing on an even keel then. <laughs> I'll tell you something that, that really is going to be a, a deal. See this yellow line down there, Bob? Going down in turn one? Yeah. They've changed that. Used to, that yellow line about where that truck is yeah. took the cars out to the yeah. bottom lane of the racetrack. Yeah. And that when you left the pits, you went on the bottom lane of the racetrack. Yeah. Now you have to stay below and that. You've got to stay on the apron of the racetrack is what they said in ARCA. Now, all the guys in the Bush Clash, when they left, they went on the, on the bottom lane of the racetrack. Yeah. But now, Arca says that you're going to have to stay on the apron of the racetrack. Okay. And I just can't, can't wait to see. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. What cornbread's in here? Where's the... <laughs> the, uh, what do you call it? Index. Let's see here. C-O-R... Corn souffle. I guess she figures everybody knows how to make cornbread. <laughs> Better. You guys want these? Mm. I need to find. I need to get my new miracle. Good. Thank you. Well, they just clean house in here, Ned. I imagine they. Bob Denny is 60 years old? Yes, he is. Man, he that is 60 years old. Old enough to know better. 23 to 60, is that what you come up with? Petty to uh, Denny? Yep. Is that right, Greg? 23 to 60? Ray Ainge, Ray. Age range, that's what I got. Well, how old is Alan? 25? Yeah. Billy Bigley. I need candy scotch tape. Where is he? Okay. Lloyd Allen, Charlie Glossback, Bill Venturini, 32 car, is Jimmy Horton. Ooh, Jimmy Horton, Bob Keselowski, Bobby Bowser, Jeff Purvis, Alan Pruitt. Mark Thompson. Nope. Mike Davis. That'd be fine. 85. Bobby Gearhart. 13. Stan Fox. Ben Hess. Andy Ginsman. Rump Nevada. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I'm not gonna be able to hear you, Neil, if if it's that low. Much better. But I think I'm losing the right side and the left side of my headset when you interrupt. There we go. We're fine now. Yep. Good, how are you? 
Oh yeah, good to see you. <laughs> Guy scotch tape, Kenny. <laughs> Are you doing it on cam? Yes. Oh, well, I be over there. Well, yeah, you're still down in your shorts. <laughs> uh huh. Live. Those things are bright. No, I do not. I hear you. I hear you, Pam. I do not hear Neil or Mikey. and all the fun. Oh, Daytona. I love Daytona. Benny, he said something about going over to the Winston Tower. No, not you. Bob Jenkins. Yeah, he's... Okay, well, now what'd you say? Where are those guys? They probably think they're still on vacation. <laughs> Boy, I love vacation. Where's John? Hey, John! You using that special worm I gave you? Yeah, great, Ned. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you know, maybe Benny can do something with this. Now, knowing Benny, he's probably out eating somewhere. Well, here we go. Position. A provisional start based on the 1991 Arctic car owner's point standings without a time in qualifying. Car number 43 is Joe Boer out of Montmorency, Indiana, driving the Boer Farms Buick. Also provisionally starting in position number 41 in the 21st row, car number 16, Roy Payne out of Mooresville, North Carolina, in the Payne... He said something about going over to the Winston Tower. No, not you, Bob Jenkins. Yeah, he's, okay, well, now what'd you say? Where are those guys? They probably think they're still on vacation. <laughs> Boy, I love vacation. Where's John? Hey, John, you using that special worm I gave you? Yeah, great, Ned. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you know, maybe Benny can do something with this. Now, knowing Benny, he's probably out eating somewhere.
Well, here we go. Of the STP Prestone rookie candidates, 0-2, Frank Kimmel. Call you back in 80 laps. John, we're going to get in our fire suits. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. As 42 stock cars come to life, our winter vacation is over. For the first time in history, ESPN is proud to be part of Stock Car Speed Weeks at Daytona International Speedway. Tomorrow night, we'll have coverage of pole qualifying for the Daytona 500 by STP. Next Saturday night, same day delayed coverage of the Goodies 300 Push Grand National event. And today, it's the ARCA 200. 80 laps of all-out competition at the World Center of Racing. knowing Benny, he's probably out eating somewhere. Well, here we go. Starting 18th in row 9, the 0-4 car of Bobby Woods, a Pahrump, Nevada, Las Vegas International Speedway, Pontiac. Call you back in 80 laps. John, we're going to get in our fire suits. Come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let me look at that back. As 42 stock cars come to life, I'm not hearing you, our winter vacation is over. For the first time in history, ESPN is proud to be part of Stock Car Speed Weeks at Daytona International Speedway. Tomorrow night, we'll have coverage of pole qualifying for the Daytona 500 by STP. Next Saturday night, same day delay coverage of the Goodies 300 Bush Grand National event. And today, it's the ARCA 200. 80 laps of all-out competition at the World Center of Racing. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports, presents Speed World. Today, from Daytona International Speedway, it's the ARCA 200, and you couldn't ask for more perfect weather. We have bright, sunshiny skies, a nice, cool breeze, and we're set to go racing here at Daytona. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to Daytona as we begin our stock car coverage a little bit earlier this year. Normally, we don't begin until Darlington, which falls in late March or early April, but we're very happy to be here at Daytona with a great schedule of events for you in the next week. Now, we have located the guys that normally are on this broadcast team, the guys you saw that were still on vacation. They weren't over by the ocean, but instead we're down by Lake Lloyd, which is in the infield here at Daytona. Ned, where are you? Well, Bob, this is a great day for ESPN, but then it's also a great day for the ARCA drivers because this is somewhat of a showcase event for those guys. Ned, I came here in 1965, 23 years old, to run the ARCA event. Felt like if I had a good day, maybe one of these days I could drive a race car for a living. I finished third that day. In 1969, I won the ARCA 300 here in Daytona. Those two or three races is one reason I was able to get the job driving a race car for LG DeWitt and one reason I'm standing here talking to you today. Well, I'm sure that experience was good. And there's a lot of experience in this field today. Charlie Glotz back, Ben Hess won this thing last year, and Bill Venturini, the defending champion. But there's a lot of guys just like myself, 23 years old, know that if they have a good day today, maybe five years from now, they'll be a Winston Cup driver. And that's what they're all pulling for. Hey, Chapman, let's go to work. One, two. Okay, I guess we got to. 
Well, Dr. Jerry Punch is on pit road with a perfect example of the difference in experience that exists in this 42 car field. Jerry? Thank you, Bob. It's no secret that ARC has been used as an entry level for young drivers trying to get some experience on the super speedways. And no better example than that than this young man here, Loy Allen Jr., 25 years of age, entering his first super speedway race, his first ARCA race. In fact, the largest track he's ever driven on was five-eighths of a mile, and that one was dirt. But he has a lot of horsepower, and the veterans say he has a lot of horse sense because he's come to them and asked them what to do in today's race. And their advice, well, let me show you what they said. His father, Loy Allen Sr., has made a lot of money putting up precision wall. They told the young man, be wise today. Don't make a name for yourself down here trying to knock him down. Let's go back to Bob Jenkins. All right, thank you, Jerry. And now let's take a look at the Sears diehard starting grid for today's ARCA 200. On the pole at 192.033. From Raleigh, North Carolina, car number two, Loy Allen Jr. outside the front row. From Sellersburg, Indiana, number 28, Charlie Glotzbach. In the second row, number 25, the defending series champion, Bill Venturini from Chicago. Outside, Lebanon, New Jersey's Jimmy Horton in car 32. The third row consists of Bob Keselowski from Rochester Hills, Michigan in number 29, and Springfield, Ohio's Bobby Bauscher, car number 21. Jeff Purvis starts in seventh position. He's from Clarksville, Tennessee, drives car number five, and then the number 96, Hickory, North Carolina driver, Alan Pruitt. Going to the fifth row, it's Mark Thompson from Cartersville, Georgia in the number 62 Pontiac, and Mike Davis from Camden, Arkansas in the number nine Oldsmobile. Bobby Gerhardt starts in 11th position. He drives number 85 and hails from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And then short track open wheel star Stan Fox from Janesville, Wisconsin in car number 13. The rest of the starting lineup, Ben Hess starts in number 13th position. He has won the last two out of three races here. Andy Gensman is 14th. Then Billy Thomas and Clifford Allison. Dale McDowell and Bobby Woods are in the next row. The 10th row, Richie Petty and Andy Hillenberg. Row number 11, Thad Coleman and David Elliott. T.W. Taylor and Bob Revac make up row number 12. In the 13th row, it's Charlie Baker and Mark Gibson. Bob Strait and David Simcoe will go from no row number 14. The 15th row has Ron Burchette and Craig Rubright. Glenn Brewer and Robbie Cowart go from row number 16. In the 17th row, it's Frank Kimmel and Jerry Hill. The 18th row, Mike Wren and Bob Denny. Row number 19, Bobby Massey and Bob Dodder. The 20th row, Jeff McClure and Billy Bigley Jr. And in row number 21, the provisionals in this race, Roy Payne and Joe Boer in car number 43. 80 laps on the two and a half mile Daytona International Speedway as we get set to bring you ARCA Racing. Stay with us. Yes, sir. Jenkins. He's always missing all the fun. Oh, Daytona. I love Daytona. Benny, he said something about going over to the Winston Tower. No, not you. Bob Jenkins. Yeah, he's... Okay, well, now what'd you say? Where are those guys? They probably think they're still on vacation. Boy, I love vacation. Where's John? Hey, John! You using that special worm I gave you? Yeah, great, Ned. Oh, yeah, you know, maybe Benny can do something with this. 
Now, knowing Benny, he's probably out eating somewhere. Well, here we go. Well, the command has been given. 42 stock cars have come to life, and our winter vacation is over. For the first time in history, ESPN is proud to be part of Stock Car Speed Weeks at Daytona International Speedway. Tomorrow night, we'll have coverage of pole qualifying for the Daytona 500 by STP. Next Saturday, same day coverage of the Goodies 300 Bush Grand National event. And today, it's the ARCA 200. 80 laps of all-out competition here at the World Center of Racing. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports coverage, presents Speed World. Today, from Daytona International Speedway, it's the ARCA 200, and you could not ask for a more perfect day weather-wise. Not a cloud in the sky, bright sunshine, very comfortable temperatures as we get set to begin our stock car season. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins. Normally, we begin our season at Darlington in late March or early April, but this year, we're very happy to be here at Daytona for coverage of Stock Car Speed Weeks. Now, we found the other members of our broadcast team. They weren't over by the ocean, which is about three miles from here. Instead, we found them down in Lake Lloyd, a man-made lake in the infield here at Daytona International Speedway. Ned? Well, Bob, this is a great day for ESPN, but then it's also a great day for the ARCA drivers because this is somewhat of a showcase event for those guys. Ned, I came here in 1965, 23 years old, to run the ARCA event. Felt like if I had a good day, maybe one of these days I could drive a race car for a living. I finished third that day. In 1969, I won the ARCA 300 here in Daytona. Those two or three races is one reason I was able to get the job driving a race car for LG DeWitt and one reason I'm standing here talking to you today. Well, I'm sure that experience was good. And there's a lot of experience in this field today. Charlie Glossback, Ben Hess won this thing last year, and Bill Venturini, the defending champion. But there's a lot of guys just like myself, 23 years old, know that if they have a good day today, maybe five years from now, they'll be a Winston Cup driver. And that's what they're all pulling for. Hey, Captain, let's go to work. One, two. OK, I guess we got to. Come on, guys, hurry up and get up here. Well, Dr. Jerry Punch has made it into his fire suit. He's down on pit road with a perfect example of the difference in experience in this field. Jerry? Well, Bob, it's no surprise that ARC has been used as an entry level for young drivers trying to get some speedway experience. The best example, our pole center today, Lloyd Allen Jr., a young 25-year-old driver running his first ever super speedway race. His first race here in ARCA competition. In fact, the biggest track he's ever driven on was five-eighths of a mile, and that was a dirt track just near Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, he has got a lot of horsepower, but he's also got a lot of horse sense because he has gone to some of the veteran drivers and asked their advice. One veteran said, look, your father has made a lot of money building Precision Walls, which is a sponsor of the car that the youngster's driving. You don't make a name for yourself today here at Daytona as a rookie trying to knock him down. Let's go back to Bob Jenkins. All right, Jerry, and here's a look now at the Sears diehard starting grid for today's ARCA 200. The pole is Loy Allen Jr., car number two. He's from Raleigh, North Carolina, 192.033, the qualifying speed. Then Charlie Glotz back in car 28. The second row, Bill Venturini, the defending series champion, number 25. And Jimmy Horton from Lebanon, New Jersey, in car 32. Bob Keselowski goes from the inside of row number three in car number 29. And Bobby Bowsher, the series runner-up last year in car 21. Jeff Purvis starts in seventh position. He drives car number five, and then Alan Pruitt in car number 96. Fifth row, Mark Thompson in car number 62, and Mike Davis in number nine. Row number six has Bobby Gerhardt in car number 85, and Stan Fox, the short track open wheel driver, in car number 13. The rest of the starting lineup in the seventh row, it's Ben Hess and Andy Ginsman. Row number eight, Billy Thomas and Clifford Allison. The ninth row consists of Dale McDowell and Bobby Woods, row number 10, Richie Petty and Andy Hillenberg. In the 11th row, it's Thad Coleman and David Elliott. The 12th row, T.W. Taylor and Bob Reback. Charlie Baker and Mark Gibson make up row number 13. 14th row, Bob Strait and David Simcoe. In the row number 15, it's Ron Burchette and Craig Rubright. Glenn Brewer and Robbie Coward start in row number 16. 
The 17th row, Frank Kimmel and Jerry Hill. 18th row, Mike Wren and Bob Denny. Going to row number 19, it's Bobby Massey and Bob Dodder. Jeff McClure and Billy Bigley Jr. start at row number 20, and the two provisionals in this race, Roy Payne in car number 16 and Joe Boer in car number 43. The cars are on the track, warming up. In just a few moments, we'll have the green flag and the start of the ARCA 200 here at Daytona. I hear your time. Okay, we're we doing billboards and then John. Okay. By the way, John. <clears throat> Jimmy Horton pitted on lap 22 last year. <laughs> Do you hear me, John? Welcome back to the World Center of Racing, Daytona International Speedway in Florida. Today, same day coverage of the ARPA, ARCA Supercar Series, 200 miles of competition. And our coverage is being brought to you by Goodyear, the unanimous choice of every NASCAR Winston Cup team. And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. Well, there's some interesting pit strategy being talked about, and for that, let's bring in our other commentator on pit road. Here's John Kernan. Bob, you want to call it a risky pit strategy. 1990 race champion Jimmy Horton says that, hey, he thinks he can make it 200 laps without refueling. That is, if they get enough caution flags. Now, crew chief Billy Wilburn says they'll need between 15 to 20 laps under caution to enable him to go the distance. So, you know, it's going to be interesting down here to wait and see if they decide to stick with this risky strategy. All right, John, let's take a look at the uh, track that they'll be competing on here this afternoon. It is two and a half miles in length, the tri-oval. The pole speed was 192.033. The time on the lap was 46.867. We'll go 80 laps, and the field is separated by 4.3 seconds. Now, the oval, as you can see, the uh, back stretch flat and straight. However, here on the main grandstand area is a tri-oval. Pit Road here in the tri-oval area in front of the main grandstand. As far as the banking is concerned, the uh, tri-oval is at 18 degrees and at 6 degrees, while the turns are banked at 31 degrees. That's why they call it the World Center of Racing. Over 190 mile-an-hour laps can be turned on these uh, laps. Now let's go down to Jerry Punch on Pit Road for a quick comment before the green flag. Gentlemen, already trouble for one driver. Mike Davis in the car number nine out of Camden, Arkansas, has come on pit road with a throttle hanging up. The throttle pitching on the air cleaner. He has been put back to the rear of the field. They fixed the problem, and it's cost him about 32 starting spots. Back upstairs. Wow, a tough break already for the young driver. It looks like we could get a green this time by as the field is stacked up behind the pace car, and we get set for 80 laps, 200 miles of competition. And, guys, nice that you could uh, make it up here to the booth. You look fine in your... Uh, vacation attire but now it's time to get busy thank you very much bob and i tell you what loy allen ned his heart has to be pumping louder than those exhaust pipes the first time he's ever been on a racetrack list like this on the pole here's the green flag and the arca 200 is underway at daytona charlie comes back jumps him a little bit on the start i don't think that surprises too many people because loy indicated himself that he wasn't going to head for the front he was going to take it very easy in fact he told us that he's not really thinking about winning this race he just wants to get some experience and keep his nose clean out there and that is a very commendable attitude it's a great strategy let's see if it's going to work because there's going to be cars on the outside of him, on the inside of him, cars every place in just a couple of laps there are cars back there that they don't want Charlie Glock's back to get away from him. They want to stay in his draft. Ben Terraining, of course, being one of those drivers. So Jimmy Horton and those that have experience at drafting. That's Loy on the bottom of the racetrack. <laughs> J. 
Charlie Glotzbach leads lap number one. Ben Hess pulls alongside of him in the area between the trioval and turn oh. number one. Look at Jimmy Horton on the outside of that little V6 goes right by Glotzbach. It's almost like Glotzbach has a problem or something. With ease he went by. Well, you wonder if the V6 is going to have an advantage, Manny, when you see him make a move of that sort. Most of these drivers do run V8s with larger or smaller restrictor plates. Jeff Purvis in car number five and Loy Allen, the pole sitter, who has dropped back now to sixth position as we're about to complete two laps. There's two V6s in the race today. The leader, Jimmy Horton, has a V6. Also, Stan Fox has a V6. There's Ben Hess in that black car. He's on the move. Because he knows his way around this racetrack. Took advantage of the situation when Jimmy Horton ran out of gas last year near the end of the race and went on to win. He's the defending champion of the race and uh, as a matter of fact has won the last two out of three here as now Bill Venturini in car number 25 is going to be the sandwich in a situation as they head for turn number three. Here's Jeff Purvis coming up on the outside. That's Bob Keselowski in car number 29 down on the inside and That's you can see how far away uh, Horton is full. That's a Chrysler product. That black car on the inside, a Chrysler product. A very infrequent brand name to auto race in the past 10 or 15 years, but some cars in the ARCA division, some fellas are running Chrysler's and doing a good job. Battle is for third position as Jimmy Horton leads. Lots back running second, and now Purvis has moved in to third spot. Bill Venturini and Keselowski battle it out side by side for fourth. That's not a good situation, Bob, battling side by side with these restrictor plates. You'll see the car in front of them be able to pull away because they're breaking such a wide area of air and they just simply won't run as fast running side by side. See how far Jeff Purvis has pulled ahead of him? This is called uh, being a little bit hard headed right now. One of those guys needs to fall back and get in line, but they're both refusing to do it. They want that spot. It's cost them. Lots back is now within about a half a car length of the second position. As Bill Venturini brings up the second group of cars, that's fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth as they run together. Field now begins to move into various packs. We've got the first three cars running together, and then about seven or eight cars running in the second pack, and then they divide up from there on back. It'll be interesting to see if Venturini he lost a lot of ground on this first three when he and Keselowski were running side by side if he can catch them. But it didn't take Jeff Purvis long to run down. Lots back in the red car of Jimmy Horton. He seems to be content when I say he, uh, Jeff Purvis, he ran up on him. But now he's going to just check him out there a little bit. He, he's in the lead draft. That's where he wants to be. Unless Glotzbeck makes a move. Now Glotzbeck makes a move. Five laps have been completed out of 80 that make up this 200 mile race and a great shot from overhead on Airship Shamu as they go down the flat back stretch here at Daytona. Right now the cars as they enter turn three probably run 190 miles an hour, maybe 192 miles per hour. Looks like they're just barely moving. They're really leaping behind that wheel. <laughs> they are moving quick. In the early stages of the ARCA 200 from Daytona International Speedway, we're glad you could join us. Jimmy Horton has the lead right now. We'll be back with more of our coverage right after this.
back at Daytona International Speedway and the ARCA 200, where Jimmy Horton continues to hang on to the lead. Man, oh, no. Charlie glides back. You're yeah. way behind, Bob. Glides you back. <laughs> you got to pay attention. Going down in turn one, glides back, and Jeff Purvis blew right by Horton, the leader, took the lead. Now, glides back in front of the black car, Purvis, the white car, second. So Horton falls from first to third in a matter of a few feet as Jeff Purvis now is the car in the middle. Charlie Glotzbach is your new leader. Just as we suspected, if Glotzbach made a move, Purvis would try to go with him. In fact, he helped Glotzbach to make that move. Bill Venturini still running forward. Those three front cars running very close together. Venturini might be picking up a little bit of them. You can see the distance there. There's Keselowski behind him now. Keselowski needs to be a little bit closer to Venturini for them to be real effective in the draft. The closer they can run together, the better off they are as far as speed's concerned. I believe Venturini is gaining on the leaders, and he's doing it, as you said, almost alone. So if he get up there, looks like Venturini has a good race car that could win this race today. For the most part, though, these three guys continue to run ahead of the rest of the field. Here now is the replay. That's Horton in the lead at the moment. But watch Charlie Glotz back go outside at number 28 to go into first, and Purvis using the same groove to take second. Mm. Boy, they looked easy. Yeah, he just uh, picked up the draft, rated the two drafted together, and took advantage of Horton. And Horton knew it. Wasn't anything he could do about it. Oh. But he'll sit there a little bit, and, and then maybe Purvis will decide he wants to take the lead and see if Horton can help him. Jeff Purvis, of course, a very well-known short track driver, making his... Uh, debut but certainly his mark in super speedway racing here at Daytona was crashed and coming off turn two there's a car up against the right side returning wall looked like zero four just as it went by our camera he and that's car Bobby Woods from Pahrump Nevada it looks like there is also a number 33 involved two cars both of them have made it to the infield grass there's the car that you refer to Bobby Woods in car number 04 but I believe the 33 of Dale McDowell also was involved. Doesn't look like he hit anything. He did slide to the infield grass and has the car moving again. So the first caution period of the afternoon comes out after 10 laps here at Daytona as a two-car crash interrupts the action out of turn number two. Dale McDowell, we saw the sponsor on his car, Dover Cylinder Heads. He's from one of the most beautiful places in the country, Chickamauga, Georgia. You ever been there? Oh, it's beautiful. Mm, sounds good. It is. Safety officials have arrived at the car. We'll check on his condition and be back with you. We're under caution for the first time here at Daytona. More after this. Thompson's going to pit for adjustment. First caution of the ARCA 200 is out because of a two-car crash counting it coming out of turn number two, lap number 10. Here it is. There we see the Woods car. 04 has hit the outside retaining wall. Meanwhile, 33 car Dale McDowell has spun down through the dirt. Very fortunately, hasn't hit anything. Hasn't hit anything. And he continued to on around, but pit stops are being made here, and Jerry Punch is down there. Jerry? Mark Thompson, one of the cars pitting down toward turn one, gentlemen. He is getting four fresh Goodyear Eagle tires. He radioed in and said the car is extremely loose. He just, the car gets extremely loose almost out from under him in the corners and decided to come in and take advantage of this early caution flag to change all four tires. His fourth Thunderbird now off the jack, back in gear, down and away. That car is owned by Henley Gray, a 
who used to run Winston Cup with me, I know. I don't think, did he race with you, Ned, when you were racing? I think he was uh, starting by the time I quit. There's one of the cars that was involved in that incident on the backstretch, McDowell. He has come around. He's getting new tires on the car and some fuel. Looks like he's going to be able to continue. The car doesn't appear to be uh, damaged in any way. Probably needs a pacemaker for his heart, but other than that, he's okay. <laughs> Bob, I think he stayed in the lead lap. He was able to get his car going, went around, caught up to the field before he came into the pits. John Kernan has a report from Pit Road on Keselowski. Well, Bob, Bob Keselowski has complained of a push. His car does not want to turn when he gets it into the turn, so his crew looking over some tires. Since we're only 11 laps into this event, they really don't want to take the chance and lose their field position by bringing him in this early because he would still have to make another pit stop on fuel. So Ron Keselowski and the crew continue to talk over the strategy, and we'll have to wait to see how it unfolds. Kasilowski, a four-time winner last year in ARCA competition. Well, this isn't the only event that we'll be covering for you here on ESPN during Stock Car Speed Weeks. We'll have qualifying for the Daytona 500 tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Now, this qualifying only determines the front two qualifying positions, the front row for the Daytona 500. And then next Saturday night at 8.30 Eastern Time, We'll have same-day coverage of the Goodies 300 Bush Grand National Race, which was, uh, is always one of the best of the entire week here at Daytona. So you'll want to join us for that. We'll take a look at the top 10 here with the uh, speed reduced because of an accident on the backstretch. 12 out of 80 laps have been completed. Stay with us for more from Daytona International Speedway. Then he said he wasn't getting so apparently it's just my headset. I haven't even looked at that thing. No, there's no reason for you to unless uh, it changes drastically. Okay. And this is Jerry. at Daytona and while the 04 car of Bobby Woods has gotten off the racetrack that car into the wall coming out of turn number two we can tell you that the pole sitter of this event driving car number two Loy Allen Jr. in his first ARCA and Super Speedway race has fallen back to sixth position and with more on the young man here's Jerry Punch. We mentioned at the top of the show, Bob, he probably was quite a bundle of nerves but you think he was nervous take a look at his father here that's Loy Allen Sr leaning up against that cyclone fence. Now, that's about 20 feet behind pit road. He has not left that perch. And when he dropped the green fly, he took both hands and grabbed big handfuls of that steel fence behind him to hang on. In fact, he has not watched a single lap of this race. He's standing back here waiting and watching and possibly praying a little bit for this youngster to come home in one piece because he knows it's very, very difficult here. And he's responsible for the young man being here. He bought the race car but he wants him to be a superstar in racing. And many believe up and down the garage area that he could be that one someday. Back upstairs. Hey, Ned, you know what he's going through, don't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do, too. You exactly. Drive, so. <laughs> he has uh, driven, driven many kinds of race cars, including go-karts, was the 1989 champion of the go-karts in North Carolina in 1989. Loy Allen Jr. running in sixth position at the moment. We're still under caution. The uh, safety crews just now have the number 04 car on the hook, and it's being gotten off the racetrack. So it's going to be a couple of more laps before we can go back to racing. There's been some rain here the last this week. I just wondered maybe some of the safety vehicles didn't get stuck over there because it was an unusual long time to get that car hooked to the wrecker. But as you said, it is behind the wrecker. It's going towards the garage area. It won't be long. We're going to see, see some 190-mile-an-hour speeds. The uh, weather has been cool and in some cases damp here the past week, but it cleared this morning. And I'm telling you, like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, you could not ask for a more perfect day. The people are 
in their shirt sleeves enjoying the warm sun that's coming down on them and in fact this coming week is predicted to be very good weather wise there's the vast expanse of daytona international speedway there's lake lloyd on the right of your screen we'll take another break and be back with more of the arca 200 from daytona What was all that problem over there trying to get that car and stuff? Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, Dr. Jerry Punch, and John Kernan back at Daytona International Speedway and the ARCA 200. And we should be getting the indication this time around we'll be going green next time for yellow because of a two-car accident involving Bobby Woods and Dale McDowell. And Jerry Punch is in McDowell's pit. Bob, we've caught up with Pete Card, who is the crew chief for Dale McDowell. And Pete, you made a couple of stops here under the caution. What's the problem? Well, when the car in front of him spun, it put him into the gravel, the dirt, and it busted the air dam, flat, flat spot of the tires. So we had to change the tires and we taped up the uh, front part of the car. So we're all right now. Okay, so the car is okay. Remember Dale McDowell's performance last year on ESPN in August? He started 42nd on ESPN at Michigan and finished second. Let's go up pit road to John Curtis. Jerry, I'm with Ron Keselowski, the crew chief on Bob Keselowski's car. And, uh, Ron, we saw you looking over a lot of the tires. Apparently, Bob's picked up a push out there. Yeah, he got a push, and uh, we're trying to adjust the stagger on the tires as much as we can, which is not a lot on the radio. Plus, we're going to change the uh, right front air pressure by five pounds and take two turns of bite out of the rear when we get a pit stop. So I guess you're waiting for your fuel window now. With the car pushing as badly as it is, is he going to be able to hang on to the draft? Well, it could, he doesn't want to get real close because the front end's moving so much over in the corners. He needs to keep the air on the front of the car to, to uh, keep it from going to the wall. So we're going to have to lay back a little bit, and, and uh, when we get to yellow or make our routine pit stop, we'll make them changes. Well, Bob, it's got a Joey Arrington Chrysler motor in the car and running alone without the benefit of the draft earlier. He wasn't really losing that much to the lead three-pack. You're right, John, and he'll line up in fifth position as we get set for the restart. In the lead, car number 28 is Charlie Glotzbach. Jeff Purvis runs second. In third position, it is Jimmy Horton. Fourth is Bill Venturini. Then comes Keselowski and the pole sitter, Loy Allen, Jr. The pace car still has the field in tow. However, it should be going to the left and pulling off or off the racetrack and onto pit road. It does. The green flag waves, and we are back to racing. Takes a while for these cars to get up to speed, especially with that restrictor plate on the engine. As a matter of fact, you talked about qualifying tomorrow for the Daytona 500, which we're going to cover here on ESPN. A change this year they're going to give them two qualifying laps because of that problem. some cars just have a lot of trouble getting up to speed in two and a half miles so they're going to give them a shot tomorrow to qualify in two laps just about everybody that you talk to says that second lap is going to be faster and you'll want to be with us tomorrow night as we watch and see who becomes the pole sitter for the daytona 500 coming up a week from sunday Six cars now hooked up in the lead draft as they come around to complete lap number 17. Well, Venturini, before the caution came out, Bob, was slowly gaining on that front threesome. Now he's up there with them. We'll see what he can do with it. 
Jeff Purvis goes to the outside in the white car. Meanwhile, it's Jimmy Horton in the, in the red car. Oh. And uh, boy, that didn't pay off for Purvis. Here's a spin on here the on the main straightaway. Away. Car number 62, Mark Thompson spins through the tri-oval. He's trying to get the car headed in the right direction. He's headed for the wall in the pit area. However, gets it corrected and continues on. And a car smoking badly in turn number one, Jeff McClure, who blew an engine, and the yellow flag comes out again. What a wonderful job that Mark Thompson did in that race car. Down through the grass, sideways on the racetrack, down through the grass, headed for pit road, and boy, did they scatter like ducks when he got down there. But he saved it. Great job, Mark. That could have been a disastrous situation, but Thompson had the situation handled very, very well as the field comes around now and takes the second caution flag of the afternoon. I'll tell you, that's no easy task, sliding through that grass and having any kind of control, or maybe he didn't have any kind of control, <laughs> but it certainly looked good. Go back and show you. Here you can see that Thompson has already made the grass, and he's headed right toward the uh, pit wall, but as he hits the uh, solid pavement, he gets the car straight. Out of baby. <laughs> Dr. Jerry Punch on pit road. Guys, it, it shouldn't surprise us that Mark Thompson is awfully quick on the trigger. He has been a jet fighter pilot for a number of years. In fact, his company, Phoenix Air, is contracted to the U.S. government. What he does about eight or nine months of the year is fly MiG and other airplanes from other countries and let the U.S. fighter pilots try to catch him and shoot him down. So he's a pretty quick guy when it comes to turning that wheel inside that cockpit. Say what? Uh, <laughs> shoot him down? <laughs> no. Going 190 miles an hour to him is nothing compared oh, no. to what he does uh, on a normal basis. Sunday afternoon, Saturday afternoon ride. <laughs> the 82 car we saw coasting, uh, the black car with the pink numbers, was Jeff McClure. That's who started all this mess when he blew an engine here in the front straightaway. Mark Thompson is the one that suffered the most, uh, taking the car into the infield grass and messing up the very beautiful uh, grass that has been prepared by the officials here at Daytona. Made a few tire marks through there. It will remain under caution here for uh, the next few moments. We have uh, already seen a couple of incidents and uh, earlier in the weekend, I had an opportunity to talk to Bill Venturini, who is currently running in third position. The question I ask him, because of the possibility of trouble up front, is it good to start up front here in this ARCA 200? Well, I thought so. Uh, last year I started fourth, I think it was. It didn't make any difference. The first four cars got taken out in the first four laps. But uh, usually, yes, usually it's better to start up front here because um, you, you, you usually have the more experienced drivers up front here in Daytona, and, and it does help. Uh, but like I said, you never know. Last year, the, the four guys that hit the wall, and we all wrecked together. Uh, was there over 100 years worth of experience between the four of us, and it didn't matter. So anybody can have problems here at Daytona, even the most experienced of drivers. The 62 car of Mark Thompson has make, made it on to pit road. And uh, Jerry, what do you have to tell us about that stop that's going on? Bob, all they can do is look at the tires and check them for flat spotting. The reason is they don't have any more tires here, any brand new tires to put on the car. They had sent the wheel cart for some new tires to put the Goodyear bin, but when they came in just a little bit ago, we mentioned, and changed to put on four fresh tires. Those were the only four new tires they had, so they had to put the old ones back on if they had to change. He said, no, we'll just check them, make sure they're not going down, and we'll send him away, which is what they indeed just did. So Thompson goes back out onto the racetrack, joining the field at the uh, end of it. We might mention that there were nine drivers that began this race on the Hoosier tires and uh, two V6s in the field. We've already mentioned that of Horton and Fox. John Kernan has a report on pit road. Well, Bob, we're standing down here with Gary Bowser, the crew chief on Bobby Bowser's car. Now, Bobby's got a Robert Yates motor in there, but it looks like he's kind of hanging back. Is he just biding his time out there? Well, the motor's running real good. The car's a little bit tight. We're just kind of waiting to get a few laps behind him. Now, he told me yesterday that if you make it through the first five laps of this race, you're okay, but you kind of disagree with that, huh? <laughs> I'd say 25. <laughs> <laughs> also, a very lucky day on Thursday. Bobby just missed getting into a major crash up there in turns one and two. He said he feels lucky. This could be his lucky weekend. We'll wait and see. Well, Bobby's dad, Jack, uh, still holds the ARCA 200 race record at 164. That was set back in 1966, and uh, Jack Bowser is certainly no stranger to ARCA racing. In its early infancy, he was one of the uh, men to beat in this type of competition. Back in just a moment.
Um, you we, got we, yourself into this, Goldberg. <laughs> you might do something a little bit on that 41 car, Richie Petty. You know, uh, yeah, he's Richard's nephew. Okay. Oh, you got to land. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I did 41 Richie Petty out of Richard's nephew, Lee Boy's grandson. He's 23. He's a young He's young right. Hey, John, that uh, Stan Fox with that V6 might be thinking about going all the way. All right. Okay. Around the world, around the year, with over a million miles of auto racing coverage, ESPN Speed World today is in Daytona Beach, Florida at Daytona International Speedway for the ARCA 200, part of Stock Car Speed Weeks for 1992. Under caution, because of an incident here in the Tri-Oval that involved the number 62 car of Mark Thompson, he's back in the race. The safety crews uh, are checking the racetrack for any debris that might be out there. And uh, one of the guys, when you talk about experience or lack thereof, well, here's a young man who's also trying to make his way into uh, major stock car competition. This is a guy with a pretty familiar name, Richie Petty. Richie Petty, from and from Randman, North Carolina. Uh, lives just across the street from Petty Enterprises. Richard happens to be his uncle, the grandson of Lee Petty. This is Maurice's son. Remember Maurice, chief that used to build all the engines for Petty Enterprises? This is his son. He has two boys that drive, Richie and Mark. He is the youngest driver in the field at age 23, and until he made the pit stop, he was running in 14th position. So uh, Petty was uh, doing pretty good, and John Kernan has more on this story. Well, Bob Richie, he's only 23 years old, yet he's been driving a race car uh, for five years. Talked with him this morning, a very nice young man. You know, of course, one of the first questions you have to ask somebody with the last name of Petty is, hey, what's it like? Lee Petty, Maurice Petty, his father, Uncle Richard. He says, well, hey, it was no big deal. They're just like me. But he said, I'll tell you what I want to do this year. I'd like to run at least one Winston Cup race so I could tell my grandkids down the line that, hey, I ran against the king, my uncle, Richard Petty. Richie Petty in car number 41 will restart this race in 32nd position. Now, another young man, but here's a guy that has experience in his uh, early racing career. This is Bobby Bowser, who missed out on the ARCA championship last year in the last two races. And we ask him, did losing last year's ARCA title increase your enthusiasm for 1992? Well, last year was uh, pretty disappointing there at the end, but, you know, you can't deny the fact that we had an awful good year. I mean, you, you just can't deny that fact. But the last two races really killed us with engine trouble. You know, I just felt all we needed to do was just, you know, run pretty conservative and come my way with a top five finish at each, each race, and we'd have it sewed up. But the Lady Luck just wasn't shining on us, but uh, we had an awful good year. But this year, you know, coming to Daytona, we're having a lot of lot of help from Ford Motor Company, and we got an engine from Robert Yates to run this race down here. And I really think, as close as we was last year, we're going to be running pretty good come Saturday afternoon. Boy, the word Bowser just uh, brings back very special memories for me, having grown up in the Midwest. I watched his dad, Jack, drive many a race. Tell you, when you see that young man and see him on the racetrack driving a race car, I know I'm getting old because I worked on my race car for two weeks at Jack Bowser's shop in Springfield, Ohio, 1968. He was about three years old. Now here he is driving a race car. Are you that old? Yeah, I am. Man. 
The green flag is out, and we are back to racing at the ARCA 200. Flats back, leads them down. And poor Clifford Allison, that red car on the inside, is going to get black flagged. Well, Loy Allen had a very poor start, fellas. Uh, he just didn't get up to speed very quickly, and uh, I don't know if Clifford uh, jumped the flag or, or what the situation, but he did He did pass down on the inside, and that is a no-no, as you say, Benny. So number 12, Clifford Allison, will receive the black flag next time around. On the restarts of the of these races they have to do their passing on the outside they cannot pass on the inside and when i saw clifford on the inside i knew he was in big trouble very clearly here's ben hess coming up on the outside of bob keselowski now hess got a good start but he passed on the outside that's bobby bowser in the blue and white car right behind hess he's going to pick up his draft and see if he can push him right on by keselowski here at the start finish line and he does Keselowski down on the inside out of the draft as the others uh, join the outside line and Keselowski loses a couple of spots. So Clifford Allison is in the pits. Stop and go for him. Boy, that was a big crash down in turn one. A lot of cars in trouble in turn one. At least four cars are in trouble. There goes one spinning. Now we have a fire erupting on one of them. This is a multi-car tangle down in turn number two. Several cars sliding to the infield. And the yellow flag comes out for the third time. It looks like Richie, no, it's not Richie's car burning. It looks like his car sitting on the bank of the racetrack. And there's a driver climbing out of the car. We're glad to see that. It appears to be the number 48 of Andy Gensman that has caught fire the 83 white car also there that's Mike Wren but the one on fire appears to be Gensman let's take a look at uh, a replay and see if we can determine how this multi-car tangle began we see some smoke up in front a car is already spinning now the car is going to go down he's going to go back up we see him here, another car is spun back there. He's backed in the wall, and that's where the fire came from. And he's coming off, and the oh, car turned over. Yes. Yeah. He but overturned, and it landed on its wheels and gets drilled again by another car. Meanwhile, the car explodes in flames, and even though he was hit a couple of times, overturned, Gensman had the ability to climb out of that car, and he appears to be okay from a different angle. There's the 88 car. It's David Elliott. As he goes around. This is the, the left rear tire. Yeah. But it looks like he'd left rear tire was off the car. He slides to the uh, infield out of harm's way. The 67 of Bobby Massey goes by. And from yet another angle. I'll tell you, once you see all that smoke in, in front of you, you don't know what to do. You jam the brake zone, try to make a move, and hope to dodge everything. But uh, sometimes lack of experience when you get in a situation of that sort. A lot of these drivers don't have a lot of experience at super speedway racing, running at these speeds. When something happens in front of you and you see all of that smoke, you can't see the outside wall or can't see the cars in front of you. And uh, you'll just do things then that you normally wouldn't do. And, but if you have a lot of experience, you know the best thing to do is to hold that car as straight as you can. Don't lock those wheels because not only on a race car, but on a passenger car, you don't have control of the car when the wheels are locked. Yeah, you want to maintain your uh, attitude and your calmness and just try to drive out of it. Here it is from the uh, airship Shamu. Several cars at the bottom of the racetrack in turn number two. That's a blue and white car I thought a little bit ago was Richie Petty. That was not. That was Mike Davis that was sitting on the racetrack. And we can see the two cars there together. in the roll back to load this car up. That's Andy Ginsman's car. Joining ESPN4 coverage of the ARCA 200 today is Airship Shamu, the goodwill ambassador for SeaWorld Parks in Florida, Texas, California, and Ohio. SeaWorld rescues and rehabilitates hundreds of marine mammals each year, and we're glad to have them with us today piloting Airship Shamu, Peter Buckley, and Bill Stufer. It's 194 feet long and nearly seven stories tall. The 15 car of Craig Rubright also involved in the incident. He has a lot of damage there on the right side of the car, but has made it back to the pit area as the crew goes to work and puts on new tires and tries to get the body work away from the tires. 
I tell you, that car can't be competitive after this, Bob, with all the sheet metal damage that is done on it. But he is from Florida, Clearwater, Clearwater, Florida, and certainly I'm sure he has a lot of fans at the grandstand. We'd like to get out there and run some more for him. Craig, an accountant by trade, a former uh, SCCA and IMSA road racer, making his way into stock car competition. The number nine car of Mike Davis is just about to be uh, lifted off the racetrack by the wrecker. Looks like Mike nailed somebody pretty good with the front of that car. I think you're talking about a little bit ago that the inexperience and what happens, you just don't know what to do in a situation like this. Basically what creates these multi-car crashes for an inexperienced driver, when they see trouble in front, they jump off the gas. They immediately back off the gas and just that hasty movement will spin a car out here at Daytona. You've got to come off the throttle easy. You've got to go back on the throttle. Everything you do at this racetrack has to be done so easy. And that's exactly what happened. These guys going to the corner, they see smoke, they jump off the gas, and around the car goes. Dr. Punch has uh, more on this multi-car accident out in turn number two. Jerry? Bob, we, we caught up with Bob Shack, who's one of the winningest drivers in ARCA Series history, and you were on the radios with Mike Davis. What did Mike say happened over there? I uh, said that uh, somebody got down in the grass there and, and come back out in front of him and basically uh, had no place to go. How's Mike? Mike's good. These, these fine cars tore up, but we can fix it as long as he's okay. Mike Davis okay. It's some scary moments for some of the ARCA drivers as one car comes off the grass back up in front of a lot of others. A lot of serious sheet metal damage. There back were there. six cars involved in the incident, Jerry. Gary Rubright, Bob Denny. Andy Gensman, Mike Davis, David Elliott, and Mike Wren. But as far as we know, no drivers injured. Gensman was our biggest question mark, and we saw him jump out of his car and is okay despite the car rolling over and then catching fire. But the cleanup will take a while, so we'll take a break. Thanks for joining us for coverage of the ARCA 200 at the World Center of Racing. Flagman to open pit road is he's out of sight of the people on pit road. They can't see it. Okay, Bobby Gearhart says that he couldn't see it to come in. So he didn't know whether they were open or not. So uh, Bill had to go down and talk to one of the ARCA officials to find out if it is in fact open. So now they've uh, found out it's open. So he's finally coming in about two laps after he wanted to originally. But actually, it's probably working better to their uh, strategy. Stay out a couple extra laps. And they're going to change left side tires. Do what, Neil? John? What? Okay. Jerry's. Okay. All right. Okay. ARCA 200 from Daytona International Speedway on ESPN Speed World. And we are 28 laps into this event and under caution because of an accident over in turn number two. Now, there is the man who indicates whether or not the pits are open. And he is located quite a ways from the actual entrance to pit road. And this has caused some problems here in the early going of this race. More on that from John Kernan. Well, Bob, Bob Gerhardt was wanting to come in and pit after the pits, uh, you know, which was supposed to come open after the first uh, caution lap by, but a little bit of uh, confusion there. Bill Gerhardt, his crew chief, had to run down and ask an ARCA official whether the pits were open, and he ended up waiting out there a couple of extra laps. Well, they told us at the driver's meeting that they would wave a flag at the in, uh, beginning of pit road. There was no flagman there, so we actually had to wait two more laps to find out whether it was open. 
But you guys, your plan, you changed left side tires this time. And talking with you yesterday, you said a four tire change. You still have one more pit stop you need to make for fuel. Will you go for right sides then too? Well, last year when we were here, the car was running real good. We decided to go the whole way on tires. And with 10 to go, the car got terribly loose. So we decided not to take any chances today. The car is running real good. We changed left sides. We'll probably get right sides next, next pit stop. I guess, though, uh, the strategy here is now you lose some uh, track position, but these other guys in front of you, you have to pit for gas in about 5, 10 laps anyway. Well, if this race goes another 15 to 20 laps under green, they're going to have to come in under, under green. That's another situation. Last year we got caught uh, one lap down when we had a pit under green. This is the uh, situation from the Gearhart's pit. Bill Gearhart with the strategy. We'll see just how it plays out today, Bob. Okay, now here's a problem, guys. This uh, ind this individual with the flag is on this angle, and when you look up pit road, Ned, you can't see him. Can't see it. Now, he was there all along, but they just couldn't see it from the angle that they were looking at, so they did need uh, an ARCA official or someone to tell them. Now, the driver, if he knew where that flagman is, he can look over there and see it as he comes uh, towards pit road, but he probably didn't know where he was situated there, and sometimes when you're in that race car, everything else is sort of oblivion out there anyway. There's some debris on the racetrack that they better be picking up before we can get back going. Well, one of the other uh, open wheel drivers that has made his way into this ARCA field is Andy Hillenberg, and down to his pit with Jerry Punch. Well, Bob, you, Bob, you mentioned he's 28 years of age. His first time at Daytona, his first time in an ARCA car. He's driving for Ken Schrader. Ken Schrader owns the car. This is Tim Kohut, the crew chief, and... Tim, Kenny Schrader came over a minute ago and said both of you were very, very impressed with Andy's performance so far. Well, we've been real impressed all week long with Andy, and Kenny's up on top of the truck watching. He said he's doing us a super job. He wants me to watch him. No surprise at all that an open-wheel youngster can come to stock cars and do pretty well. Well, this is the best one we've ever had down here. We're real happy so far. We're looking for a good finish. Timmy Kohus and, of course, Kenny Schrader, who made his name in sprint cars, trying to help another sprint car ace, Andy Hillenberg. Let's go up to John Kernan. Jerry caught just a little bit by surprise. One lap to go. Keselowski, Bob, is in. They have already changed right side tires, added fuel. They will, they will correct the handling problem. Remember, the car was just a little bit too tight. They were pushing it, so two rounds out of the right side. Here goes two scuff tires, Goodyear's tires, going on the left side. The field coming down the back stretch. They're going to have to really hustle to get it going, and then he's going to be without the benefit of a drafting partner. This could turn out to be, well, I don't want to say bad strategy, but it could turn out to be a bad break for Bob Keselowski, but he may be able to make it the rest of the way with the 50 laps or 49 laps left. He may be able to go the distance down. John, he has a drafting partner because Jimmy Horton stopped, stopped the preceding lap. He's on the racetrack. He will be right in front of Keselowski, so it'd be interesting to see if these two guys can go to the front. Of course, Keselowski has to catch up to the field. They're going to get the green flag here in a hurry, but now he is going to have good speed as he picks it up uh, coming off the of turn two, so it'll be interesting to see if he can actually catch up to the field and get anybody to draft with. The field is just about to take the green flag for a restart on the 32nd lap. Now, Loy Allen Jr. in car number two, the pole sitter of this race, has stayed out of trouble, and he is currently in sixth position as here comes Charlie Glotzbach, Jeff Purvis, and Bill Venturini down. The green is out, and we're racing once again at Daytona. And Bob Keselowski hasn't even come into the picture back there, fellas. He, he is not uh, up there to pick up any kind of draft at the moment. That's a good point, Ned, to bring out that he, in fact, did not catch the field, so be all alone. Well, but he did have good speed, so he's, he's coming up on some of the back markers, but Charlie Watsback got a good Boy, start, he fellas. He, he jumped out like a rocket ship and has separated himself from the rest of the group as they head down the back stretch. And poor Jeff Purvis has no one to draft with, and nope. he's just going on backwards. 37 car driven by Ben Hass now moves into second position. Ben Serini is third. John Kernan has more on this pit strategy of Bob Keselowski. Well, I'm with Ron Keselowski, the crew chief. And, Ron, you guys pushed it just a little bit there. He's going to have to do some moving to catch the draft. Yeah, we uh, they caught us. We were going to come in, and they restarted the race. And uh, since he was already on pit road, we had to do it. But now you can go the distance without uh, stop. You don't need to stop anymore for fuel, do you? You can go the road. I said you can go the rest of the way, can't you, without, so maybe that might play into your uh, hand there. Yeah, we can go the whole whole 50 laps now. 
Well, Bob, they've got their fingers crossed that they, the race does not stay green long enough to catch them and put them a lap down because they really do need the benefit of a drafting partner. It's going to be a long movement toward the front throw for Keselowski. Look at this great wheel-to-wheel -wheel and side-by-side, nose-to-tail battle for the lead coming off of turn number four. That's Charlie Gloss back in front. Carl by Floyd Garrett, a young uh, trucking company here locally. That's Ben Hessen second, Bill Venturini, and Bobby Bowser has now moved up to the fourth spot. As Purvis goes back to fifth. And Purvis has lost the draft of those first four cars. A lot of action here in the back of the pack as they try to sort themselves out. Meanwhile, Bill Venturini, who is running in third position, he and the 37 car of Ben Hess came very, very close to touching as they came out of turn number two. And now Venturini takes to the high side and will take second spot. Good move. Bill Venturini saw what he needed to do with that car, pulled up on the outside and just moved right on around. And I tell you, most of the time when you get beside of a car, you lose some, some momentum. But he didn't because he had enough momentum when he drove up beside him to move right on by. And Bobby Bowsher now trying to take over third position. But it isn't going to work. He drops back to fourth. Well, he saw Ben Verini make that move, and he would like to make that same move himself. But we heard his brother say a little bit earlier his car was a little bit tight. And so probably when he got up there, it pushed a little bit on him, and he just simply wasn't able to move on around. Jeff Purvis in car number five has moved into the pits and, in fact, gone behind the wall. Purvis who was running in the top five for most of this race is behind the wall in the 15 car of Greg, uh, Craig Rubright from Clearwater, Florida, also comes in. He was one of those involved in that accident over in turn number two. He has a lot of damage to, to his car, but we can see now Glotzbach and Ben Torini building up in the draft, Bob, and pulling away from the third, fourth, and fifth place cars. Meanwhile, Bowsher is up on the high side of Ben Hess. And the rookie, Roy Allen, up in fifth place now in car number two, trying to take over the fourth position back there. Isn't that amazing? That kid is doing one yeah, heck of a job. He sure is. You know, I, I, as I heard the story, he's been a dirt track racer for three or four years. He quit two years ago, mm -hmm. hasn't driven a race car for two years. Here he is on the pole at Daytona. Prior to today, the largest track that he had ever competed on was five-eighths of a mile, and that was a dirt track. And he came here with this Robert H. engine and Robert Yates car, put it on the pole, and uh, is currently running in fifth spot. Well, now, there's a, there's a mess. <laughs> but obviously, that is a mess. Around four position. Is that Richie Petty? Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, he's in sixth up? position, yeah. yeah. He made a pit stop as we knocked him in a little bit earlier. And, this, uh, and may have another petty star in the making here, guys. Well, Kyle paid his first ever race. That's right. He was here in exactly. an ARCA race, and he won it. <laughs> Did you see Hillenberg in that car on the, in Stan Fox touch wheel as they came off the second corner? Another guy who uh, does not have very much stock car experience, Stan Fox in the 13 car on the bottom of the racetrack. That's Clifford Allison in the 12 car. Ooh, Whoa, oh, look out! Fox is in trouble. Spinning off of corner number four. Hang on to it. Long area here, and I believe he's going to keep from hitting anything. In fact, hang on. Caution is out. And up, baby. Man, oh, he man. was fortunate there. Don't you love it when the plan comes but, together? <laughs> but I'll tell you, fellas, the fact that several years ago they paved that wide yes. area coming off of turn four, coming into the pits, that helped him. Yep. Or he would have just slid right on down into the wall. Yep. That pavement scrubbed off a lot of speed. But you could see that coming. But you saw all of that bunch of cars together there, and they were jockeying around, and just a, what, a half a lap before he got together up there. And then here, the back end, just the air goes off the spoiler, and around he goes. I tell you what, those other guys, Clifford Allison and all those cars behind him did one super job not to run into each other as they tried to figure out which way he was going. Yep. They really did. did a great job. Stan Fox competed in the uh, stock car race out at Phoenix uh, a week or so ago, and he also has uh, driven in all-pro, Winston all-pro competition, so this isn't his first stock car start, but certainly his uh, first on a super speedway of this nature. Was doing fine until the rear end got away from him, coming out of turn number four. Well, it's about time for a pit stop anyway, and I expect we'll see most of them. We're nearing the halfway point of this yep. thing, fellas, and uh, they can probably go. Those that had questions about how far they could go on fuel, they can probably go the rest of the way from here. 
38 laps have been completed, so only two until the halfway point. We're at Daytona International Speedway for the ARCA 200. Charlie Klotzbach leads Venturini. Bowser Allen will be right back. flag out once again at Daytona International Speedway, our fourth of the afternoon. This because of Stan Fox's slide in turn number four. We saw him hit some bumps up there. That got the car going just a little bit. The back end went around and around he goes. And that's the area you were talking about that is now paved that used to be grass, dirt. And you're right. He would have just kept on going had that been grass, but that pavement slows the car down. Also, uh, the ARCA NASCAR officials and here you talk about pit stops they're all coming down <laughs> pit road this time yeah we're gonna see a lot of pit stops as those running at the front of the field come in for a pit stop Charlie Glotzbach leads him down Venturini is behind him then Bowser and Loy Allen John Kernan has this report on pit road well as you had speculated most cars can go the distance now for Bobby Bowser they're gonna go right side tires only they're checking the left they're hoping to get pretty good wear one tank of gas goes in, second tank going in. Now let's go down to Jerry Punch in Glotzbach's pit. 53-year-old Charlie Glotzbach getting four tires from one of the best pit crews in all the motorsports, the Dale Earnhardt, Richard Childress crew, pitting this car that was purchased from Richard Childress about two years ago. Floyd Garrett holds the car. They have changed right side tires. Now they put left side tires on. As they get ready to drop off the jack, they are now in the way. They tell their driver halfway next time by. They signal the drivers he leaves pit road on their radio. Glotz back and others rolling out of the pits now as we once again have the overhead shot from Airship Shamu. The number 83 car has its hood up. The driver, Mike Wren, he was another one of those involved in the incident up in turn number two that involved six cars. You can see the sheet metal damage on the right side of that car. Now the hood is up as he is... No, the hood is uh, broken. Maybe they're uh, they're yeah. trying to get the hood reattached to the car is what I think the deal is. So we can get back in the race, maybe. Yeah, we can see them back there working on the hinge. The car has been back in the garage. They brought it out onto pit road and continue to work on it, hoping to get Mike back in competition. As we indicated, this will be the halfway point this time around, and the halfway point will come under caution. car leading them down and we will uh, look as they come down to see who did not pit and therefore who will be shown as the leader of the race and could be the number 32 car that uh, he stopped no, I think Dale Douglas is the leader that's Dale McDowell. Dale, Dale McDowell. McDowell yeah he was involved in the crash but yeah, yeah. he did not lose a yeah. lap so that's right. he may be uh, yeah. the leader stay out there yeah he so he's made a pit stop also the 32 car Jimmy Horton has made a pit stop let's go down to Jerry Punch Charlie Glotzbach has just radioed back to the crew here on pit road that he has a vibration in the car. And that's the lead car that came in just moments ago and put four fresh tires on the car. Now they were putting more tires on the wall behind me. They are getting ready to bring Charge and Charlie, they call him, back down pit road to change tires. And it could be a break. Had they gone green just a minute ago, that vibration wouldn't have been felt until he got down to turn one, which might have been too late at those speeds of 190 miles an hour. But a tough break for Glotzbach as the crew here awaits his appearance on pit road. Well, he led the uh, first, or 33 of the first 39 laps. And as a matter of fact, Charlie Glotzbach has has four Winston Cup victories and his second one in his career came here at Daytona in a 125 qualifier back in 1970. That was when the qualifiers counted as points paying Winston Cup races. So there is our leader. Yep, it is Dale McDowell in car number 33. Nice young man. Talked to him a few minutes down there today. Or was that yesterday? I'm having so much fun, I forgot. <laughs> I <laughs> talked to him this morning down in the garage area and he is a nice young man, has aspirations like many young drivers of going Western Cup racing one day. McDowell leads as the field is once again being restacked to start this race. We'll go at least one more lap, however, before we get the green flag and a resumption of the ARCA 200.
Well, Dale Douglas is a Georgia boy, too. He's just a golfer. <laughs> Just because it's a first one, I'll make sure I know. <laughs> Still got 27 cars in the lead lap. That's Pretty not good. bad, is it? Not bad at all. Piece of gum. You did. You're good. Roll, roll that tire up here. Track facts are brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. There's no secret the limiting factor in being able to afford to race is how can you afford to get to the racetrack number one with a race car at engine, about $70,000 for an ARCA crew. But once you get here, you have to buy tires. And these Goodyear Eagle radials are $246 a piece. That's about $1,000 a set. But Goodyear, who's been so good to racers over the years, decided down in Daytona this week that they would make things a little easier for the competitors. They've sought a program for 1992 that they will give 20 brand new Eagle radials to the top 10 qualifiers divided equally among those top 10 finishers, I should say, in super speedway races. So Goodyear, who has done a lot of work to make racing safe for drivers, now trying to make it a little less expensive. All right, thank you, Jerry. One more lap to go, and we'll be racing again here in the ARCA 200. We are in our fourth caution period of the day because of Stan Fox's slide in turn number four, and John Kernan can update us on Bob Keselowski. Well, Bob, you know, we talked about whether or not he'd catch a caution soon enough. Well, he did. He's moved up into the top five right now. And a good break for him. However, remember the car was just a little bit too tight. Well, they bumped up the spoiler and they made that uh, chassis adjustment and put on four tires. Well, now Bob is complaining about having too much spoiler and the wrong tire pressure. Now, he's going to try and stick with Jimmy Horton on the restart. They're still going to try and stick together and head toward the front but his car is not handling the way he would like it to so we'll just have to see what happens you know john i wondered about when we saw them making all of those adjustments benny you could very easily overdo it when you come in you don't a car running 195 miles an hour you don't make a lot of changes on it because it affects it a lot you know that's one thing wrong with practice the uh, limited amount of practice you get at a racetrack because when you make a change on a race car you only want to make one minor change and go out and try that and come back in and make another minor they made three adjustments that one pit stop. You're right, and that is an awfully big adjustment. Charlie Glotzbach, who led most of the first half of this race, will restart in 16th. Jerry Punch has an update on that story. Bob, he did not come back on pit road and pit, as we said a minute ago. He had radioed in and claimed he had a vibration in the car. The crew said, whatever you do, unless you absolutely are sure, stay out. If it gets bad, come on back in, but if you pit, we're not going to have a chance here these last uh, laps because we'll have too many cars to pass. So Glotz back stayed out, and we're going back to green. Yes, we are, and it will be interesting to see if that vibration continues for him because if it does, he is out of luck completely. And as you indicated, if it is okay, then he's made the right decision. There goes Jimmy Horton. Horton takes the lead again. Look at this, three abreast behind him. That looks like Keselowski on the inside. Yep. Is that not Bob? Yep. Keselowski on the inside up to third place. So that was good strategy on their part. And apparently, if the car is a little bit loose, certainly not bothering him here right now. And Bill McDowell is still in second place. There's Charlie Baker, 93 car. Billy Thomas in the 22 car. And there goes Mark Thompson. Old oh boy, Mark is back up and goes right by these fellows. That's the fellow that went down through the grass a little bit earlier. Yep, that's right. Here in the trioval. Look how close they mm. come coming off the fourth turn. I was afraid they couldn't get too close. Yeah, really. They didn't. Clifford Allison is right behind those two cars are coming up on them as they run side by side. See the red car, that's different. Boy, look at him come up on him. The red car of Clifford Allison really moving up. Now, what's he going to do once he's caught up? Well, if he can just keep his momentum up, he can go under both of them when he gets to the back straightaway. Now, go on the inside, Clifford. 
inside, but yeah, no, he's going to choose the outside. Yeah, you saw a little more room out there. Cole oh, is loose with you. There's Venturini on the outside. Here he comes. He's one of those who was just on pit road and now fights his way back up through the traffic. Bill Venturini from Chicago, the defending series champion of ARCA. Good gutsy move, uh, Clifford Allison. He was. Right there going up on the outside. A lot of confidence in him, not only in himself, but in the race car as well. The black car we see right in the middle of the screen, I think that's Glossback as he tries to wait, work his way back to the front. Jimmy Horton is checked out in front. As we watch this action back in the pack. The 22 car, the orange and yellow car, is Billy Thomas. Here's Bill Venturini to the inside of Clifford Allison. So Allison's sort of lost his momentum. That's the 21 car. Bobby Bowser on the inside. Bowser, the, the left side tire is almost down on the apron. And you're right, there's Watts back in the black car. Oh, man. <coughs> he, he looked like he was going to root his way in there. <laughs> you know, did. And you know, the most common question I'm asked today is from race fans is, don't you miss driving a race car? Yeah, right. Are you crazy folks? <laughs> what a cush job sitting up here in the air conditioning and talking about these guys. <laughs> so let those idiots go. But Venturini has just not been able to pass. Billy Thomas. And I'm impressed by Billy Thomas. He's yeah. keeping that car around on the bottom of the racetrack, and here comes Glossback. He's on the inside of Venturini. Takes that spot away. Charlie uh, passes Bill Venturini. The Billy Thomas car looks like it is handling very, very well. Uh -oh. Let's see what Charlie can do here, though. Looks to the inside going into one. I was hoping that Billy realized that he was there because he's been hugging the inside, and that's what look like where Charlie wants to run. Now here we go. We'll see some action down the back straightaway. I have a feeling that Charlie is going to move away and Venturini's going to get yep. right on his draft. That's uh, with the help of Venturini and draft. Just made a motor right on by. No question about it. Uh, Clifford Allison is caught back there and he doesn't have that draft when he came up and passed Thomas and Baker there before they were running side by side opening up a wide area there so he just drafted right on past him but now he doesn't have that situation. In fact he's got Bobby Bowser on that truck now to worry about. Well Jerry Punch can update us now on the pit strategy that's being considered on pit road Jerry. Bill Venturini's crew chief Phil Hammer was saying that Bill didn't want to abuse the car. He wanted to wait on Charlie Glotzbeck, who he knew was coming in a hurry, so they could have a partner and draft back toward the front. Now Glotzbeck has gotten around Venturini. They should be able to hook up, hopefully, and run down Jimmy Horton. That's their strategy. We'll see if it's going to work. Back up there. That's exactly what they're doing. They're fifth and sixth. Glotzbeck and Venturini are hooked up in a draft. But they have quite a bit of racetrack between themselves and the leader of the race, who is Jimmy Horton. But Jimmy Horton doesn't have anyone to race to draft with. He's just out of the racetrack by himself. And I wouldn't be surprised if these fellows don't run him down in, in 10 laps. Well, he's four and eight tenths seconds behind. Charlie Glotz back is four and eight tenths seconds behind the car number 32 of Jimmy Horton. Horton won this race in 1990. There he is, leading currently with Bob Keselowski running in second position and Dale McDowell in third. Fourth belongs to the 62 machine of Mark Thompson. Well, as you speak, but Charlie Glotzbach just motored right around him. <laughs> so Glotzbach picks up the spot. And, and there's, there's Ben Hess. And Stan Fox, who uh, has not let that little spin coming off of turn number four deter him any. The problem with Stan Fox had flat tires when he finally got the car to come to a stop and he had to go so slow around the racetrack that he lost a lap getting it back around two pit road. Now fellas, Glotz back lost two tenths of a second to Jimmy Horton on that last lap, but he was running in traffic, so that perhaps had something to do with it. Different number for Jimmy Horton this year. He, we're accustomed to seeing him, in, seeing him in number 80 this year, a red number 32. You normally 
think of him as in a black car, a number 80, and neither one hold true this year. There's Keselowski, who's in second spot, and will continue to pan back and pick up this battle for third place now, Glotzbach and Venturini. Okay, Ned's probably going to give us a good read this time and see if they've gained anything. Horton is pulling away. You're kidding. Yes, sir. He's five and 37 hundreds ahead now. That's wow. surprising. Running all by himself? Yep. That is a shock. <laughs> Just motoring right on. And, and Glotzbach and Venturini are really coming up through. You know, they're running good and fast. There's Bowser and Mark Thompson at the black car in front. I think it's Mark Thompson. That's Bobby Bowser. The blue and white 21 LS Builders. And then Clifford Allison. As they go on the high side of the number 15 car, Craig Rubright. We understand that Stan Fox's car now is smoking. There it is on the bottom of the racetrack. In fact, Stan Fox is headed toward the pits. So Fox first with a spin off of turn number four and now has smoke coming from the back of the car as he heads for pit road. And the interval, uh, Ned, just about the same, huh? Same of the last lap as it was the lap before, yeah. Jimmy Horton, who made his mark in racing for the most part in modified activity in the northeastern part of the United States, came to run stock cars, and he is the current leader of the ARCA 200. just about said speed. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, good thing I didn't. Oh, he's in trouble. <laughs> I don't know how these planes fly around here and all these blimps without running into one another. Mm -hmm. ATC, I guess, keeps them straight up there. We haven't talked much about Joe Boer today, have we? <laughs> We can talk about how his, he raises some of the finest popcorn in the, the Joe, world. Joe, you got that recorder going on that satellite. <laughs> Get moving, boy. He gave me a sample of that not too long ago. And it's it? good stuff. It? Yes, sir. Hey, look at this. Good old Montmorency, Indiana, boy. Montmorency, huh? Yep. at Daytona International Speedway and under caution, the fifth caution of the day. Hey, look at this. The leader, Jimmy Horton, is coming toward Pitt Road, and so is Bill Venturini. Jerry? Well, Jimmy Horton had no choice, gentlemen. He just radioed his crew a minute ago. He pitted on lap 28 because he's got a V6 in the car. He knew he could get better gas mileage, but the car began to get loose, and he knew it was getting looser and looser lap by lap. And he said, hey, when Glotzbach finally does catch me and gets behind me, the car will be so loose I just can't drive it. So the caution flag may have been a blessing for Jimmy Horton. Right side tires going on Horton's red Chevrolet Lumina while just in front of him, they have changed right side tires and are making a major chassis adjustment in Bill Venturini's Rainex sponsored Chevrolet. Now they're looking at the left side tires and they will not make a left side adjustment. They still have trouble with the right front tire. Now the jack is down on Venturini's car. They will come around and yes, they will change all four tires. They have now just about completed service on Jimmy Horton's car. Veteran crew member Bill Wilburn and now the car stalls. Horton's car has stalled. They are pushing it. It refires. And yes, he's back in gear and headed down pit road. And Venturini's car now gets back in gear, and he too will head back to turn one. Both Horton and Venturini move on to the racetrack once again. I mentioned that uh, we are cautioned because of a spin involving Andy Hillenberg in the backstretch. He didn't touch anything. John Kernan on pit road. 
Well, Bob Kozlowski has now taken over the lead, and Ron and the crew have just been, uh, well, there you go. You see heads, tails. They don't know. We'll sneak in here and talk to, to Ron just a minute. You, I just overheard you say, well, what do you think? We're in the lead now. Can we make it? Do we stay out? What do you do? Put the $3 in a slot machine and pull the handle. Let's go for it. <laughs> These guys look like some kids with a new Christmas present that they were really hoping to get that they had opened on Christmas morning as soon as they saw Venturini and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> the other car, uh, Jimmy Horton, come down pit road. I tell you, it was a sight to see. So Keselowski now has the lead, and here is the reason that we are under caution. This was Andy Hillenberg coming off turn two. Kenny Schrader's car, Air Orlando. At least it didn't fly in it when he got the thing going sideways. Yep, it just spins around on the grass back there. That, uh, it becomes somewhat of a thrill once you see that you're not going to hit anything. I did that one time coming off of turn four when it was grassed all the way down through there. And, man, that was a ride of a lifetime. I really enjoyed it after I saw I wasn't going to hit anything. You yeah. probably like... Uh, uh, one of the rides huh? at, the, at the fair, what do you call it? Roller coasters. Yeah. Oh, the roller coaster, yes. Hey, what's that? Is, is that an air wrench? Yeah. Jerry, what's what, what's going on? Well, what happened here in Jimmy Horton's pit, gentlemen, this air wrench had a trigger break. Well, here where I'm showing you with my pen, that part of the trigger broke, and it is jammed. It will not work. This broken air wrench cost Jimmy Horton an extra 20 or 25 seconds in the pits. Even though it's under caution, that 25 seconds could make a difference for him. And uh, it could have happened under the green. And fortunately, it was under yellow. But uh, about a $400 part here could have cost him a shot at winning this ARCA 200. Back upstairs. Well, he uh, is not out of the race by any means, but it is going to be a challenge for Jimmy Horton to come back up through the traffic. We'll take a break and be back with more coverage of the ARCA 200 from Daytona. Yep. Okay. Couldn't think of a roller coaster signal. <laughs> <laughs> and Neil was talking to me and I couldn't help you. One to go. I think Charles is going to say goodbye. I think so. I think McDowell lost a lap in the pits. Did he really? Yeah, I think he did. He, he made a couple of pit stops and had the hood out there a moment ago, and then we're just now going out, and the field had gone by. Hey, Andy. Andy. Okay. <coughs> Charlie Becker and got him a nine of three. Truck driver Charlie Becker. Becker? Youngsville, North Carolina. Did you notice a while ago, instead of uh, Chickamauga, they had uh, Brooklyn, Michigan? What now? Okay. All right. Just about to go back to green here at Daytona in the ARCA 200, coming off our fifth caution of the afternoon. A spin involving Andy Hillenberg. Let's go down to Jerry Punch for a quick report just as they get the green flag. Jerry? They have put an agreement together between Jimmy Horton and Bill Venturini. They decided that the only way they're going to have any shot at all of catching Charging Charlie Hotchback is they draft together. They decided, okay, we'll draft together the car number 32 and 25. And once we catch Glotzback, it's anybody's ballgame, every man for himself. Right now, Glotzback is in second position. The leader of the race is the Chrysler product driven by Bob Keselowski. The 32 car, there is Horton. Well, he's uh, going pretty well up there, but he doesn't have Venturini with him. Venturini got hung up behind a slow car, and Jimmy Horton is a... Uh, Almost half the back straightaway in front of Venturini. I don't know if Venturini can catch him. I don't think he can. 
He might be able to in traffic a little later, but he certainly is not in the draft of Jimmy Horton at this point. Horton is coming on strong. But There's Venturini on the left side of your screen. You can see how much race track there is between them, so that strategy just simply did not work. Here comes Venturini. Kesselowski continuing to lead. Oh, Glotzbach has taken the lead. Coming on turn four, Glotzbach got the lead, went by Keselowski, and now we see that's the Bowser car in third. So, Charlie, Charlie Glotzbach in front, and I'm telling you what, boys, I think he's going to say, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> I don't know, they're hanging well, pretty tough, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, we've got about 22 laps to go. Yeah, they are hanging right in there. Bobby Bowser running in third place, and I'll tell you, that red car... 32 of Jimmy Horton is splitting that traffic open coming back through there. He's he's uh, out of our screen there right now. There he is the red car. There he's in the heavy traffic right now. But the gentleman, he passed a lot of cars in the last two laps. And don't count out Ben Hess in car number 37, who is in fourth position right behind Bowser. And here's how the lead change occurred. This is going in turn three. And Glossback goes on the inside. And Keselowski has no choice but move up and lost back has the lead. T.W. Taylor coming in for an unscheduled pit stop. Haven't said anything about him today, but that 32 car of Jimmy Horton, fellas, is coming up through that traffic. Now, we're watching the first four cars here, all experienced drivers, and there's Horton in the car number 32. That's Brevac. Bob Brevac right in front of the car 34. But look at Horton move right on the inside as he's done everybody else he has caught. Now, you see a good bit of daylight there before he gets up to any other cars. That, uh, he's doing moving. this with uh, really the uh, without the advantage of any other race car to, to draft with. He's done it on his own. But he doesn't need to run beside that car long. He yeah. don't want to. I mean, he can't help it right now. He'd certainly like to get on that in front of Breback. And yeah. he's going to do it going into turn one. Two laps ago, he restarted in uh, 20th position. Now he is eighth. But up front, it is still Charlie Glotzbach leading Keselowski and Bowser and Ben Hess. Now our AutoZone race recap to this point as we have uh, now only 20 more laps to go in this 80 lap event. 60 laps have been completed as Glotzbach comes down to complete lap number 61. 19 more to go. Our race summary shows that Keselowski was uh, the leader at that point. One of uh, 54 had let one led one of 54 laps, five caution periods for 25 laps, six lead changes among four drivers in the average speed, 116.26 miles an hour. Those that have led laps include Glotzbach, Horton, McDowell, and Keselowski. And out of this ARCA 200, several cars, many of them because of an accident over in turn number two. However, we have had no reports of any driver injuries in this race. Now, Bowsher is trying to get second position from Keselowski coming off the fourth turn. Oh, Bowsher a little bit squirrely. Hasn't got the position nailed down. Now he does. Bowsher goes to second. And Ben Hess tries to go by on the inside. Closed, the door was closed for just a moment, but there and there, the red car on the very <laughs> back net, you're right, is Jimmy Orton. He gained six tenths of a second on the last lap. Of course, he had picked up the draft off the lead pack, but that guy is flat driving his heart out. Jimmy Horton, look at him now. He'll catch Keselowski there in the car number 29. He'll figure out which way he needs to go, and he'll just motor on by, I think. One of the last 19 laps of this race are going to be sensational. There's Clifford Allison in car number 12. He's doing a very respectable job. Jimmy Horton pulls up behind Keselowski. That's the golden black car is Keselowski. That's Ben Hess, the black and red car in front, and the red car behind Jimmy Horton, who started working with and is now running. Well, he's about to go to fourth. Good gracious. There's a leader. The black car is in front. Bobby Bowser second. Ben Hess and Jimmy Horton. Wow. These two guys are pulling away. Bobby Bowser doing a good job up there. Picked up the draft off. Bucks back after he moved into second place. Now coming off the second corner, I believe Jimmy Horton has third place. Yes, indeed. So he has clear sailing between himself now and second place, but can he catch him? I think he can. I believe he can. Boy, that car is sticking right down there. Look, Look at Clifford Allison. Allison. Yeah. Another bold move up on the outside. He's Great going move. for fourth. He's got fourth. Clifford Allison moves to fourth position. 
Ben Hess is fifth. Sixth is Keselowski, and in seventh position is Mark Thompson in 62. I think one thing that's helping Jimmy Horton is the fact that he has fresh tires on his car. That, yeah. That's a tremendous advantage because he stopped for about 20 laps, I guess, after Glockstack stopped. Yeah. I think that's going to make a big difference. Look, he's called him, fellas. Yep. Didn't take him hardly any time. It appears to be making a huge difference, those fresh tires that he picked up. Man, that car is moving. V6 engine doing this job too. <laughs> Lost back going by some traffic on the outside. Bowser follows. Well, we're going to take a break and continue to watch this great battle up front among three drivers Glotzback, Bowser, and Jimmy Horton for a Daytona International Speedway for the ARCA 200. Just as you rejoin us here at Daytona, we have another accident, this one in turn number four. And it is our sixth caution period of the afternoon, and I am not certain that right Pruitt? now who it is. Obviously, it's a Ford, but I can't see the number. And Alan Pruitt, I believe. The second uh, digit, I believe, is a six. Let's see who's going to take the... Here comes the leader for the... Caution flag is Glotz out, back. and Glotz back will uh, maintain the lead. Look at the tire tracks. There was contact with the wall there uh, between the Daytona and the USA, and then the car continued down the banking and came to a rest in the grass off of turn number four. Looks like it hit that wall pretty hard, yeah, too, it does. Bob. Looks like the car just shot right toward the uh, outside retaining wall. He was in a rather low groove. He's back. lost the car seat. Yeah. The car is spun somewhere back there has come down hit the apron there you see where the car is spun it comes down on the apron and what happens when these cars hit this flat apron they shoot back across the racetrack into the outside retaining wall but you can see where he lost it came down on the apron and starts back across the racetrack it is number 96 that's alan pruitt you are correct there he is out of the car walking toward the ambulance he looks to be in good shape smiling saying boy that was a interesting ride no 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 he wasn't he's not smiling believe me because you can't believe how hard those walls are at 130 40 miles an hour he was probably running at least that fast when he got there i Alfred, guarantee you, i don't want to find out <laughs> from hickory north carolina up Johnny in your Canuck neck of the woods huh yep. johnny Knuff is his crew chief had himself a good run going here today, but unfortunately. Yeah, let's see. He was uh, back in 23rd. He was the first car uh, not on the lead lap uh, and uh, began this race from eighth position. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch on pit road. You know, Alan Pruitt, you said, is from Hickory, North Carolina. He's an electrician for the Catawba County school system. He has a lot of little boys and girls probably watching this telecast and pulling for him, and they're good to know that he is okay. He assembled a pretty good race car in operation. He bought that car from the Wood Brothers, the famed team out of Stewart, Virginia, and the engine in that car was a Junior Johnson engine from J.B. Rains because his next-door neighbor outside of Hickory is a fellow by the name of Mike Beam, who is the crew chief for Sterling Marlin. So Alan Pruitt had a pretty good ride going, and now it's over here at the ARCA 200. Let's go up to John Kernan. Well, Jerry, it's just about over for Bobby Gerhardt. He really uh, needs a miracle to get back on the lead lap. We're looking at the tire that came off just moments ago as he had to pit before this last caution. You'll see the tread just basically flew right off. That's because the tire was going down. Bobby was waiting and waiting for a caution. Finally, it came off. He had to pit, and wouldn't you know it, a couple of laps later, the caution flag flies. So a tough break for Bobby Gerhardt. Bobby Gerhardt, another driver from uh, the northeastern portion of the United States, as the 96 car of Pruitt is off the racetrack now. Gerhardt was the rookie of the year in ARCA competition in 1988 and finished 12th here in this race last year. So once again, uh, the field is being reassembled for a green flag and a restart. We are just about 13 laps from the end of this event, and right now it's anybody's race. We're at Daytona, and we'll be right back.
Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, it's Benny's hat. <laughs> we got to tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you yeah, bet you up that film, Pam. Roll the video. <laughs> Pam, go ahead and cue up that. <laughs> Just 12 laps to go in this 80-lap event. Here are the top five. It's Klotzbach, Bauscher, Horton, Clifford Allison, and Bob Keselowski. And coming up next here on ESPN from Daytona International Speedway, the Rolex 24 at Daytona. That's coming up at 10 o'clock tonight. We'll recap all the activity from that 24-hour event held last weekend here at Daytona. The Rolex 24 at Daytona at 10 o'clock tonight, Eastern Time. And the blimp shot once again, Airship Shamu providing the excellent pictures from overhead. That's a rather large airship, isn't it? Over seven stories tall, I believe it is. And uh, they've given us some great pictures from overhead, this expansive uh, facility here at Daytona. You saw a shot uh, a few minutes ago of the water of Lake Lloyd, which uh, is a man-made lake and was used to create the banks here. Someplace in that lake is a very valuable piece of apparel. Benny's hat blew off of him as we were doing the uh, open uh, earlier in the day, and somewhere in the lake is Benny Parsons' hat. So uh, you may take your fishing pole out there and try to retrieve it. Let's get out of Jerry Punch. Gentlemen, 50-year-old Joe Boer is a soybean farmer from up in Indiana. Now, he's a veteran driver of Winston Cup and Arca cars for a number of years. His son, A.J. Boer, named after the great A.J. Foyt, is a freshman up at West Lafayette, Indiana at Purdue University. A.J. couldn't be here because he needed to go to class. So A.J. had all his buddies get in front of the big screen TV here to watch the race on ESPN. Joe Boer said, hey, Doc, if I can't run up front, maybe I'll do something spectacular to get on television. He said, if I, if I forget, you remind me. So, Joe, you're running out of laps. <laughs> Not only does he raise soybeans, but you like popcorn, guys? Yeah. Joe Boer raises some of the finest popcorn in northwestern Indiana in his farm in Montmorency. Back in a moment. Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch back at Daytona International Speedway. We're part of Stock Car Speed Weeks this year with the ARCA 200 today, qualifying tomorrow, the Grand National Race next weekend, and we're about to go green, Benny. Let's get up. I'm excited. This is the end. <laughs> Ten laps to go as they come down. Seventy laps have been completed. We're on lap number 71. Here we go to green, and Glotzbach doesn't have a particularly good start as Bobby Bauscher moves to the outside, and Bauscher may have the advantage in turn one. He does. And here comes Jimmy Horton up on the outside trying to take over second place. Jimmy Horton has been having trouble getting started. I mean, Glotzbach has been having trouble on restarts all day. Now then, who is going to have the best car as they come off turn two? Is it Glotzbach or is it Horton? Boy, Bobby Bowser hopes they race side by side back there for a while. Sure does. Bowser in the 21 car pulls ahead slightly off Jimmy Horton. That is Klotz back on the low side. But look at Horton go into yeah. that turn. He closes right up on the back bumper of Bobby Bowser and now goes to the outside of him coming off of turn number four. And as they cross the stripe, it is going to be Jimmy Horton in the lead. Horton is at the front. And Klotz back is pulled back into that third spot. Well, almost back into that third spot. Yes, he has. And there's Venturini right behind him, so Venturini is fourth now. 
Liver Dallas in his fifth in the 12th hole. Caution flag definitely helped Ben Perini. He had lost the draft to, with Jerry Punch had reported that he and and Bobby or Jimmy Horton were going to try to hook up together and draft, but Horton just ran off and left him. Look at him dive low there on the back stretch, trying to break the draft. These guys behind him. He's going to be going all over the racetrack, trying to break that draft as you talked about. But look at Bowser going in turn three, closes up on the back bumper. Hanging right in there. Young Bobby Bowser wants to win the ARCA championship this year and would like to start it off with a victory here at Daytona. Side by side racing here. Keselowski on the inside. That's Richie Petty on the outside. And Bree back, back in the middle. Yep. Well, Richie's hanging on out right there. Petty Ooh. doing a fine yes, job. He, is. Well, no, he didn't let those guys intimidate him. He just went right on in there. He's in seventh position. Richie Petty is in seventh place. That was a pretty bold move to stay up there on the outside <laughs> going into that turn. Three abreast. Reback and Keselowski are side by side. There's the number 30 machine of Ron Burchett from Walkerton, North Carolina. Walkerton. Good. And he's trying to keep these guys behind him. And Keselowski has the lead, but here comes Brevac back on the outside. Now this is, what, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th that we're looking at. And only 7 laps to go. There are those running up front. Bowsher, it's, it appears, slows there as it came off of turn number 2, and uh, Klotzbach closed in very, very quickly. I think he slipped a little bit, yep. Bob. I think the back end slipped just a little bit on him, and maybe he had to lift. And boy, when you lift with uh, these carburetor restricted plays, it hurts. Okay. There's Keselowski and Brevac as they're side by side, and there comes the 30 car of Burchette. Ron Burchett races my son, Kevin, up at the Caraway Speedway, down on Myrtle Beach Speedway in the NASCAR Late Mall Stock Series. 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th on back with this group of cars. Keselowski goes to the outside of Richie Petty to try to take 7th position away. And I believe he's going to do it. Yes, he does. Richie's going to try to pick up his draft now. They really bad. 7th spot. 7th spot. And from there on back through about 12th spot. <laughs> a lot it's, of action. Yeah, it's anybody's race there on back. Five laps to go the next time by. The reason we're watching this, folks, this is where the action is. Jimmy Horton has broken away a little bit up front. And uh, no passing going on there, but a lot of passing going on back here in the pack. A yellow car, number 51. We haven't mentioned him. That's Dave Simcoe, a longtime veteran of ARCA competition. He's uh, behind Burchette. He's out in the Detroit area. And hey, there's Andy Hillenberg. And he had that spin earlier, but has come back up. Jimmy Horton, the leader, in second place still. Bobby Bowers. Third is Charlie Glossback. A smoker going into turn one. Big Don't know if it'll be a smoke. Caution. And the caution is out. Yes, the caution is out. This race ended under caution last year, and with five laps to go, that has to be a consideration. It's the number 67 car of Bobby Massey that has a lot of smoke coming from it. Here is the race back to the flag now, and we really don't think this is going to be the end of the race, but it's going to be interesting to watch anyway. Boucher trying to hold on to that second position. Here comes Horton down. He'll be the first to cross the line. Boucher second, then blocks back at Venturini. Ben Hess running in fifth place. Clifford Allison is sixth, and Keselowski is seventh. Bob Breback beats Richie Petty to the line for the eighth position. But there again, we're not saying this race is over, but that's the way they will line up. This is the seventh caution period of the afternoon. We have had uh, some accidents. We have had one pretty massive crash over in turn number two, but no injuries to any of the drivers. Andy Gensman was uh, our most serious concern as his car turned over and then caught fire, but he climbed out okay, and so it's been a very safe race and a very competitive one, and it isn't over yet. The ARCA officials are going to check the track very quickly. We'll have probably a couple of laps of green when we come back to Daytona. Okay. All right, sir. Speed Week promo first, okay. Yep. 
Okay. I wonder if we, should we mention that that's going to be a call in? Is that confirmed enough? Okay. All right. In addition to all the events we're covering here at Daytona, join us for a special edition of ESPN Speed Week, live from here at the World Center of Racing next Saturday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Our Speed World coverage of the ARCA 200 is being brought to you by Valvoli, people who know use Valvoli, and by smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. 77 laps have been declared been completed there has been no indication of green next time so we let me go and tell you what let me tell you what's going to happen all right benny the next time by Doyle ford is going to signal one lap to go that's That'll lap 78 78 the next time by he's going to throw the green and the white one lap one for lap for the money <laughs> you agree with that Ned? yeah i think that's what'll happen let's go to the pits and jerry punch Gentlemen, remember last restart, Charlie Glotzbach got jumped a little bit by Bobby Bowsher. He just told his crew a minute ago that I missed the shift, guys, in that last restart. But don't worry, guys, on this one, it won't happen again. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I thought he'd had trouble a couple of times this today, but uh, maybe just that last time he missed a shift. And, you know, you would think that after you do that a few thousand times, it would be just almost impossible to miss a shift. But believe me, it isn't long as he's been driving man, he's been uh, around this place and a few other tracks a few times he uh, first ran in uh, any type of race back in 1957 and his first ARCA start was in 1959 we're talking about 53 year old Charlie Watts back from Sellersburg in the end one lap signal has been given so next time around the green and the white two and a half miles of racing Watts back been racing along with Richard Petty Petty didn't start for 58 yeah that's right. He started in 57. Right. Yep. Exactly right. yep. As I mentioned earlier, he has four Winston Cup career wins. He won at Charlotte in 68, at Michigan in 70, here at Daytona, and a qualifier in 71, and in Bristol in 71. As far as ARCA competition is concerned, he has visited Victory Lane on seven different occasions. Last year in this race, he finished in 38th position. He will restart this one in third. Who has the advantage here? You've got a V6 sitting up front. You've got a Ford sitting there in second place and a Chevrolet with a V8 in, it in third place. Who has the acceleration advantage if nobody misses a gear? Then? I think the V6. Because I think they have, a, they have a little bit larger restrictor plate than the V8, yeah. don't they? Yeah. So I would think that he would have a little bit of advantage. And then whoever has the most power of those next two cars, be it Bowser or Rossman. So you think that Horton's going to win? <laughs> okay, well, we'll see how uh, good you are at predicting here in the first race of our stock car coverage in 1992. Yeah, I think Horton's going to win, although Bobby Bowser <laughs> got an awfully good start there a while ago. And uh, and he's going to try to do it again. We'll see. But now they see. can't afford to get too over anxious. Jump the flag, they'll get black flag. That's, that's right. right, because they aren't supposed to get on the gas till they get to the green grass that starts the, right there. This green grass, that's when he's supposed to stand on the gas. He's on it right now, and you see it pulling away from Bowser. Boy, that book V6 did take off. Green flag is out. Watch back again with a poor yep. restart, guys. And That's Bill it. Venturini is about to take third from Charlie. Yep. So Horton has the lead. Then comes Bowser. Venturini and Glotz back behind him. And yep, it looks like that Jimmy Horton is pulling away. And Bowser was just hoping that the 25 and the 28 would get side by side. They did not. And Brent Reeves trying it on the outside. Oof. Boy, the battle is going to be for second, third, fourth, and fifth on back. It appears this one is going to be on his way to victory. He keeps the car very low on the racetrack. In the but Bowser's turn. gaining. Look Bowser's gaining on him, but I don't think he has enough time. Venturini closing in on Bowser. Here it comes. They settle the score in the ARCA 200, and it's going to be Jimmy Horton winning. Bowser, Venturini, then Hess, followed by Clifford uh, Allison. Allison. Yeah. Yeah. Glock's back dropped all the way back to either sixth or seventh. Oh. From third. Boy, he got an awful another bad start. He sure did. Well, Jimmy Horton has won the ARCA 200, beginning our coverage 
of stock car racing in 1992 here on ESPN. And in the last four years, guys, there have only been two winners of this race. Hess won it in 89, Horton in 90, Hess in 91, and Horton in 92. What's that sponsor say? Is that active racing? Is that the sponsor on the side? That's what it says. Yep. That's Great job for... Uh, and Loy Allen, remember the, the poster said all he wanted to do is run 200 miles? There he is. Yep, and he Cars finished. in one piece. <laughs> 14th unofficially the final spot for the pole sitter Loy Allen Jr. Let's go to pit road. Well, Bob Orr with winning crew chief uh, Billy Wilburn. We got a heck of a driver out there. Just a great job coming back after that one pit stop put him back. Yeah, Jimmy did a great job today. He really, really drove the car well. You we had to go to the back twice. We, we elected to take on four tires late in the race, and we didn't know if we could come back, but he did a super job in uh, active racing. They put him in the ride this year, and uh, hopefully he can take it, do some more, more running just like he did today. Now, wait a minute. Were you guys sandbagging me at the beginning when you said, hey, we can go the distance without fuel? Well, we, we couldn't go the complete distance, but with the V6, we had an advantage on fuel mileage that was, was substantial over the V8s. And, and if the race goes green, we can eliminate most of the guys simply because of that. Well, there goes Jimmy Horton to Victory Lane, and we'll let you, Billy, get over to Victory Lane. A well-deserved celebration about to happen in Victory Lane, Bob. All right, John, and we will join the celebration there when we come back at Daytona International Speedway. Jimmy Horton has won today's ARCA 200. <laughs> 21 cars finished on the lead lap. That's pretty good, isn't it? it is. Half the field. How come it don't say 80 there? It's always a lap behind it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, a lot better. Yeah. How we do it on time. Good. Officially, what 14th Kenny? Yeah, That's Jerry, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay.
Stock Car Speed Weeks here at Daytona International Speedway underway. And the first major event, the ARCA 200, has been completed here this afternoon. And the winner, Jimmy Horton. Here's Jerry Punch in victory lane. And Bob, as expected, they are all smiles in victory lane. Jimmy Horton, congratulations on the tremendous win. Oh, thank you very much. You know, it's just happy to be here again. Now, you made the first pit stop, but then gambled a little bit coming in the second time. Well, it wasn't a gamble. You know, we, um, we were out front. We didn't change tires the first time, and the car just started loosening up, loosening up, and I was just afraid, you know, when we got that caution that them guys would be right on me and the car would be real loose. So, you know, I wanted to come in, and we made the choice of putting four new tires on and take the gamble of getting back to the front. You know, we are just as quick as the leaders were drafting by ourselves, so, you know, it was a gamble. You know, we needed a couple cautions to help us, which we got, and, uh, you know, it's just like playing cards. You know, you just got to keep betting on that ace. Now you gambled a little bit on the engine selection as well. You chose the V6, one of the few drivers to pick a V6 here. Why? Well, Jim Ruggles is doing our, our V8 program, and, you know, he's been researching the Buick V6, and it's real strong and, and, you know, with the restrictor plate, you know, a little bit bigger and the advantage in weight and stuff. You know, we just, Jim said it would be okay. You know, and they, they pulled back the plate a little bit from last year, and Jim was a little questionable. He didn't know if it would work or not. And, you know, he went to work, and he made us a real good motor, and I just got to thank him for doing all that. 35-year-old Jimmy Horton making up for the disappointment of a year ago in victory lane, picking up his seventh super speedway win and his second ARCA 200. Let's go up to John Kernan. Jerry, I've caught up with rookie Loy Allen, and I'm talking, as we said at the beginning of the show, a big-time rookie. First race on a track this large, yet you sat on the pole. You did what you wanted to do, though, didn't you? I did. I think the whole crew did. We wanted to come down here and just finish the race and take the car back home and just, you know, finish and make a good race. And I think that was a compliment to everybody that helped. Robert Yates, uh, David If, uh, Red Farmer helped me during the race. Uh, it was really a compliment to everybody. And uh, I just need some more experience. The guys, uh, you know, I got some experience running behind them, learning how to work lap traffic and just seeing how they, they work the traffic and lap people. And that helped me a lot. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm really happy to be where I am. The car's in one piece, and we can go back <laughs> home and be happy. That's your 14th place finisher, Bob Loy Allen. Very happy for what he learned today. Patience, I would say. I have a feeling we're going to hear a lot more from Loy Allen Jr. Let's take a look at the complete field rundown of the ARCA 200. And while we are doing this, we'll mention that 21 cars finished on the lead lap, guys. And that's very impressive. I'll tell you what, it's an impressive race because everyone talks about the ARCA cars. And they come to Daytona, and they tear up a bunch of cars. Today, they had a crash down. They tore up five or six cars. But... All in all, it was a pretty safe race today. Pretty well. It's good to see uh, Richie Petty finish up there in the in the top ten, and several young drivers trying to make their way into auto racing, having good runs here today. And there is uh, Glenn Brewer finishing in 40th position, and Bobby Woods and Thad Coleman finish 41st and 42nd. Next. The Rolex 24 at Daytona, a one-hour highlights package of that event coming up next. And tomorrow, from here at Daytona at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, qualifying. So long, everyone.